Hello, Googleization Nation, and welcome to Decoding HR Tech, a GGG Unleashed podcast with Amy Warren of Fama. I'm Ira Wolf. And I'm Jason Cochran. In each of Amy's episodes, we'll reimagine everything you thought you knew about HR tech. Let's begin. Hi, everyone. This is Amy Warren, the VP of Marketing from Fama Technologies, and this is Decoding HR Tech. And today, I'm excited to have with me Joey Price, who's the CEO of Jumpstart HR. Joey, it's great to have you here today. I am so thrilled to be here. Thanks for having me. So one of the things that I didn't want to forget when we were prepping for this, I always like to share these stories. I was going to be late to the meeting. Joey was late to the meeting because both of us were on kid pickup, right? So (laughs) (laughs) So we had to move our meetings and everything, and it's still like... The one thing I love about the impact of COVID that you and I could have that conversation and talk about that. So like freely without it being a big deal at all, where I know two or three years ago, it would have been a bigger deal. So um, totally, I just wanted to share that. That was a funny moment for me. So, you know, without much more ado, explain to everybody, tell us a little bit about your background. You're the CEO of Jumpstart HR. Let the listeners know sort of where you are in the HR space. So as we get started with this conversation today that I'm excited about, because it's so relevant, how to pitch HR tech to the C-level and then trying to tie HR tech to business outcomes. So I live in a space within the HR field of helping non-HR pros and helping executives take innovative, big ideas and make them small, practical, and actionable. Uh, I'm an HR practitioner by trade, and I've been in the industry for well over 16 years now. And I run a company called Jumpstart HR, where we provide HR services to businesses all across the US, mostly small businesses and startups, because I just have that history of working in small firms and seeing HR as a checklist as opposed to a strategic lever. And I said, that's not the way that it should be. So we work with really great teams that believe in the power of really smart decisions around HR and a really effective culture. Uh, And we help them craft that when they wouldn't ordinarily be able to do that themselves without HR in the room. Just a really quick background. I went to school for exercise science. So when I was in college, I thought I was going to be an athletic trainer, travel the world, win trophies with sports teams. But I realized somewhere by my junior year that, hey, I didn't want to tape up athletes for the rest of my life. I needed to make a pivot somewhere. And someone said, hey, you like helping people. You want to be in corporate. You don't want to be in finance and tech all day. Why not consider HR? (laughs) And I was like, that sounds exciting. I have no idea what that is. So uh, needless to say, I met with some folks in the field, learned more about it. It's been a love affair since day one. And the more I see HR's role in helping to move businesses forward, the more I feel the joy and responsibility of helping companies learn more about how really effective HR and people operations can move the needle. And I think that's what we're here to talk about today. So I really love people's stories about how they have come into HR because usually nobody intends to go into HR. Right. When they get here, it's so exciting and, and everyone really enjoys it. And thinking about like HR tech, because you know that's where I spend my day. And I think one of the things that's so important of what you said is about how we have the ability to tie things to those business incomes. And I think one of the things that's transformative right now is what's going on with HR technology and where do HR leaders start in terms of leveraging some of that technology to help tie those business outcomes to the C-level? Because everyone right now, I think, is hyper-focused on whether you're in HR or not, how do I take what I'm doing and apply it to business outcomes? So what are some of the things that you're talking to your clients about in this space? Well, the big thing is just to look at the elephant in the room about fundamentally, what is the problem that all employers are facing these days? And maybe, yes, all employers, but all organizations. The pain points are around people. The pain points are about hiring them. The pain points Mm -hmm. are about keeping them. 
the pain points, are they doing their work appropriately? Are they putting enough hours in the day, right? There's so many pain points around people, but I'm just confused and baffled and annoyed that there's such a resistance to adopt technology that help workplaces operate better. So it's like, on one hand, there's very much an acute awareness around, hey, we've got a people problem, but yeah. there's such opportunity around maybe HR technology can help us solve these things. And so I do love all of the influx and eyes and attention on HR tech kind of coming out of COVID because so much of our business has changed and the way we work has changed. But it, it still remains that people problems, people concerns can be addressed through great technology. You know, and it's interesting too. I, I normally on this don't really talk too much about what Fama does just really talk more about us being an HR technology company, but we have these conversations all the time because we are screening people online, right? And we're looking for workplace mm -hmm. misconduct issues. And one of the things that we're trying to get everyone to understand is you don't need to stick with what your normal sort of like candidate flow was. Like a lot of people wait to do any kind of screenings until after they've made an offer. We try to encourage people, when you've got those last three final candidates, right, work with us, do online screening because you're going to be able to see if there's any workplace misconduct issues going on with that person. And if there are, they're not going to talk about it in the interview. But if there are, you can either bring them up or maybe your last three, your three final candidates, the person that was your number one now isn't even somebody that you're going to consider to move on, right? And yeah. thinking about how we think about quality candidates, how we use some of the technology that we have now that also is really cost-effective in a lot of ways too. And using it at different places versus just sticking with the way that things were just because that's the way that they've always been done. Yeah, I can give you an interesting story. It's not so much about the screening tools that are out there, but just the idea of recruitment and how things can change at any given moment. So. I'm a part of a search to help an organization replace its top level executive. And we screened uh, about four candidates, two on one day to the next day. But then after we huddled, the hiring team said, hey, what about this hiring criteria? Because we had already scored and ranked everyone on, let's just say there are five categories, right? Yeah. But the sixth category bubbled up to the top as being so important that we need to go back and reevaluate everyone through the lens of that sixth category. And luck would have it or, or fate would have it, that actually shifted the balance of how individuals rank on our, our scales because that piece, some candidates that maybe we thought weren't a great fit actually had more of this thing that is needed. Yeah. And then some of the candidates that we thought were a shoe in, you know, we kind of went back and said, hey, maybe they aren't the best person for this role. And so to your point of screening and this being something to utilize when you have uh, more candidates, it's totally important to think about all of the facets that would go into hiring someone in. As much as it's about what they can do, it's definitely also about what is the implication of hiring this person? Do, we, do they have dirt dug somewhere that we need to find and Maybe that could hold us liable. Um, I'm probably diving into more areas that are more your wheelhouse than mine. <laughs> but but it, it definitely makes sense that criteria, if it's important in the final round, it should be important as you conduct your search from start to finish. Yeah. And I think, too, you know, as we, we think about all these different solutions and all the different ways to approach the process, when you're talking with other HR leaders, what are you saying to them? Like, you know, hey, what are your top tips when you're evaluating new technology, especially new technology that's going to connect the dots for things that are important to those in the C level? What are some of the things that you share with them? Oh, I love it. I, lo I love this question. I always say in a former life, I think I was a marketer because one <laughs> of the things... <laughs> One of the things that I enjoy is talking about customer profiles and avatars. And so when I'm talking to HR pros about how to get your C-level to buy into adopting HR tech, 
you have to think about their avatar, right? Everyone's different. Everyone's unique. Every firm is different. But, you know, the CFO cares about the cost and the ROI, right? The CEO is going to care about, does this move us forward in, in pursuit of our mission? Your CMO is going to wonder, hey, by offering this tool to our team, will it help create more wins and more stories that we can share with our potential customer base? So before you go into the pitch asking what's in it for you, you need to go into the pitch thinking what's in it for them. And mm -hmm. if you can go into the pitch thinking about what's in it for the person you're trying to sell this technology to, you're going to have much more favorable results and probably even healthier conversations that will help you think through, oh, well, maybe I never thought about that. Let me go back and evaluate this tool from that lens and I can give you an answer. And when you're talking with your clients about their business outcomes, what are you seeing right now as sort of like the top three business outcomes that the C-level is looking to have HR leaders connect to them on? And by the way, in that too, do the HR leaders even know that, right? Like are the expectations managed on both of those sides? So I, if I had to give a list of the three things that executives care about from an HR lens, in no particular order, I would say certainly making sure you find the best talent from wherever you can find it. So that's opening up the landscape from not just hiring in your backyard, but hiring across state lines. So that's a big thing because I was in a call with a group in, I'll just call it a Midwestern state. They were evaluating, hey, how do we replace this person that has this skill set when we know we're in a small town of 10,000 and there aren't that many people who have this skill set? So do we use a workforce strategy of trying to develop an individual? Do we use a workforce strategy of bringing in outsourcing to augment our staff? Or do we try to find a relocation package for someone who has a skill that we need that's not in our neighborhood? So finding the best talent anywhere is important. Another thing that is important is, is uh, I guess, quality of team effort. So another way of looking at that is, is employee engagement. But really, I think that, especially in this economy, executives are wondering, hey, did our team give their best today? Did we help them give their best today? And do we have the right resources, tools, processes, and goals to let our team members know what the best outcomes are that we expect? Uh, and then another thing that's important is, I'd say, the changing landscape of compliance whether it has to do with retirement planning or labor law or our, you know, the changing rules around arbitration clauses, the changing rules around non-competes. Executives need to know what's coming down the pike and what's already a responsibility for them. And it's more important if they're not in just one state, but in multiple. So we actually play in that space of compliance a lot. And we see that as, as a challenge and also an opportunity because there's a lot of instances where you can bring in an HR technology solution that actually solves for that compliance piece for you. So, you know, in our case, we actually do that. So it's difficult for someone to do online screening in-house and be compliant and not see protected class information. So we're able to suppress that. So that's just like a really small piece of just the overall compliance. But one of the things that I was interested in in hearing you say was, you know, around employee engagement, being able to measure some of those things, right? Which I think is a place and space that HR technology is starting to do well in. How can we start to quantify things that we thought weren't quantifiable before? How can we get insight into things that maybe we didn't have insight into before? So, you know, for us, we're able to kind of like let organizations know if someone has maybe committed fraud before if they've done harassing things because they're doing those things publicly online in places maybe you wouldn't have looked before. Um, what are some of the other ways that you're seeing like specific technology all of a sudden come into a space and the CEO is saying, wow, this is great. We didn't have this kind of data before and now we have it and this is really helpful to us. Well, I, I think one of the things that has come up, especially during during COVID and now in this sort of 
life after the, a pandemic environment is better quality intercommunication with folks on online. I think of tools like Slack where you're able to tie APIs into other tools so that you have an automation in one area, it pings Slack to say, hey, someone's looked at this document or hey, we've moved this further along in your project management software because someone took this action. And I think the big thing that I'm seeing out of this era of HR technology that I really appreciate is being able to offer valuable automations that quite frankly, they'll make the team member more effective. But I also argue that it helps the team members get more margin back in their day. That's why I'm also a big fan of ChatGPT, ChatGP4. Um, yeah. There are pros, cons, and concerns, and that's a, a <laughs> podcast in and of itself. But really, you know, you kicked off the show talking about, you know, it's no longer taboo for you and I to have like childcare reasons to, for pushing something back. But an automation, if an automated process gives me 10 minutes back in my day so that I can go say hi to my kid, like that's valuable to me. It's, and it's still going to drive the organization forward. So I think the major thing that groups should be looking at are automations and how tools are learning to talk to one another through APIs, through automations, because that's making all the difference of how you set your workflows up to get better output without exhausting your team. I agree. I think that's great. And I would be remiss if I didn't notice the fact that instead of saying profile or something like that, you use the word avatar. And so I'm going <laughs> to end with my last question to you. How do you think Web3 is going to change HR tech as we currently know it? And that could be a whole episode in itself, but you know, yeah. 10 words or less. <laughs> Oof, 10 words or less. Web3 Custom solutions for employee attraction and customer fulfillment. Interesting. Do you have an example? Yeah. I was talking with this really smart guy in Web3. He was talking about purchasing online real estate and how the cost to buy online real estate near Snoop Dogg's house is <laughs> way more than just like being several pixels down the road. I actually know this too, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> right? So so yeah, so by Snoop Dogg. And Martha Stewart, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Maybe they're very maybe they're like back maybe to they're neighbors. backyard neighbors. But but so dream with me a little bit. So with Web3, you know, you think about like, hey, come to our think about South by Southwest, right? One of the cool things yeah. about South by Southwest is that Brands create houses next to one another. They have activations. You can go bounce from house to house, have a great time, right? Imagine that being on Web3 where you can go in and say, I'm going to do virtual darts or kick it with the team. I'm in Poland. The other colleagues are in Chile and, and the team in Chicago. But we're all playing like darts or shooting hoops with headsets or whatever the case may be. I think it's going to make the big world small and brands who have the resources to create really awesome spaces in this decentralized world, I think it's going to be fun and it's going to, it's going to be a unique value proposition for folks, whether it's hiring or universities or groups, I think it could be a great place to play, but time will tell. Yeah. And to even go back to your Snoop Dogg reference, like it's going to change so much. Forget like maybe someone that you want to get to know or celebrity liking a Twitter post or something like that. In this case, you might be able to spend a couple minutes with them in a virtual world, right? Actually exactly. having interaction with them. And we think about how much social media has brought us all closer together. Now you're getting into like a whole other level of closeness, which you're spot on with making the world smaller. So yeah. Thank you. This has been a great conversation. It's so nice to have you on here. And I hope that you'll come back and maybe we'll touch base again in a year from now and see what are the things that are important then and where we are with Web3. Who knows? Maybe we'll even be in VR. 
when we do this the next time. I was just about to say, maybe I'll send my avatar. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> It'll be me, I promise. It'll be me. I would love that. Looking right. forward to it. That would be great. So thank you, everyone. Appreciate you listening. This is Decoding HR Tech with Amy Warren from Fama Technologies. And you know, you can always visit us at www.fama.io. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and learning about the future of HR tech. We'll be back next month with Amy for another episode. But until then, please check out Fama's website at fama.io. That's F-A-M-A dot I-O. Until next time, don't let the shift hit your plans. <laughs>